Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean. It's 5 a.m. and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. If you've been listening to this series in sequence, then you know that this is the second part on the philosophy series. And to me, philosophy becomes the bedrock of a business. It's what I talk about when I meet with clients, but it's also what I talk about when I meet with my niece, Marsha. I've been walking home with her from school since she was nine, she's 14 now. And I talk about philosophy and ethics and stuff like that. And this is the podcast. It's got to do with business, but there are the same things that kind of plague Marsha at a 14-year-old now that also bug us. So let's get on with the series and let's find out how we can take that philosophy and then install it for our own business, but also to create our own world, our own philosophy that we can live by. Because at the end of the day, there is all this running around and chasing after success and doing things that might not fit in with our own world. And I hope that this philosophy series helps you get to that point where you can create your own little world and live the philosophy, the dreams that you have, not somebody else. So what are we going to cover today? Three things as always. The first thing is six courses behind why I refuse to stagnate. The second is the concept of no time. And the third is why you can't outsource magic. Let's start out with the first one, which is six courses behind why I refuse to stagnate. At any given point in time, I'm exactly like the next person. I'm at least six courses behind. Right now, I'm learning the photography software called Lightroom. I'm doing yet another course on photography, which is how to take photographs of the Milky Way. I started Spanish when I was 20-something, and I'm still edging ahead slowly in Spanish and have now started texting so that I can better learn the language. And all of these things I have to learn, they remind me that I'm constantly behind. And it used to frustrate me a lot. I felt the pressure. I felt the pressure of non-completion, of always being behind in practically everything I was undertaking. And I'd go for a walk with my wife, Renuka, and almost invariably, I'd be talking about the things I still have to finish. All the time, I'm learning, I'm implementing, but I could not shake this feeling of frustration from seeping in. That's when I looked at the behavior of my nieces. One is nine years old and the other is 14. They have so much stuff to learn as well. Week after week, they pummeled with maths and writing and spelling and reading, and it's endless. Like every one of us, they struggle, but they don't think of the future like we do. Even when faced with an enormous amount of stuff coming up at them in the future, they're just taking it one day at a time. They don't say things like, I haven't finished my maths, so I won't take on my spellings. And we adults do just that. We believe in our silly, ideal world. A world where you start something and you finish it. Possibly even master it in the first sweep. We think that we're not going to spend on this course if we haven't finished that course. We will not buy this book if that book is not complete. Adults call themselves realists but they actually live in a fantasy world. We all live in this fantasy world where all the boxes have to be ticked. No one is saying that you should be irrational. This is not a suggestion to go out and to do 17 courses or buy 23 books, knowing fully well that you haven't finished any of the preceding ones. Yet, 
In this fast-moving world, you can't sit down and say, I've not completed this, so I won't learn that. No, 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 no. You want to be six courses behind or five courses behind or six books behind, or whatever. But you want to be constantly learning and implementing and knowing that you are going to be behind all the time from now till whenever. That is the state of the human condition. Your to-do list is always going to be in a state of things to do. Because if we were not behind, we'd be stagnant. And that is precisely what I would feel if I'd completed all my courses, read all the books on the list, and then learned all the languages that I needed to learn. I'd be stagnating. So now I prepare myself for the chaos of this to-do list. And I do stuff that I might not use for quite a while. For instance, I have these watercolor things that I do every day. I sit after breakfast, and almost every day I will paint something about the day. And when I bought these books, I bought them in 2009, I didn't know what to do with them. They just sat in the cupboard for a long time. And eventually, I opened up the wrapping and started drawing in one of the books. And now there are, I don't know, two and a half thousand drawings. There are other things in the cupboard there, stuff that I've bought that I haven't so much as opened the wrapping. And I know I'm going to be behind and someday I will get to it and I will open it and work on it and then there will be something to show for it. But for now, I'm always behind. I'm six courses behind, I'm six magazines and seven books behind. But you know what? I'm constantly striving to close that gap knowing that I never will. But I know something, something profound, that I'm not stagnant. As long as I'm behind, I'm not stagnant, and neither are you. And that brings us to the end of the first part of this podcast, and let's move to the second topic about having no time. It's not uncommon to hear people saying, I have no time. And when I hear this phrase, I smile. If you have no time, and you don't have time all the time, then you're doing something wrong. Because eventually, it's about efficiency. So if you do something in two hours, and it should take 30 minutes, then you have no time. That's a factor of efficiency. Too many of us are too slow, and not necessarily lazy, but... Definitely not using things to our advantage. So in that way, we're kind of lazy. So we buy a fancy camera and we don't bother to learn it because we have no time. We have software on our computers that can speed up things by 500%, but we use what we know because we have no time. We take the longest route to everything because we have no time and we end up spending even more time. The irony of saving time is that you have to spend time to save time. That's so weird. Because the instructions aren't that great either. You have to go through at least 17 YouTube videos to figure out what is this thing doing that unlocks my computer, that speeds it up, what is this software that I'm running right now for the podcast? And how can I use shortcuts to get there? But you have to go through all those YouTube videos. The manual is boring, of course. You don't always get the right answer, which is why 17 videos and not one video. But then... Those three minutes, they accumulate. Three minutes today and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. And what you'll find is that busy people have figured this out. They figured out that they are just like you, that they have just 24 hours. And that to get more time, they have to spend more time. They have to go watch that video, watch that stuff, do this, do that, go there. And that's how you get time. If you find yourself saying, I have no time, it almost always leads to a lack of efficiency. If it takes you six hours or a week to write an article, 
and you're not writing in 45 minutes. Something is wrong with the efficiency there. And all of this slows us down. It used to slow me down tremendously until I realized this little secret of busy people. Not successful people, but busy people. People who get a lot of stuff done. What they do is they spend that time learning so that they can implement and then save more time. And they seem to have the most time as compared with everybody else. And that brings us to the end of part two. Let's take a look at part three, which is why you can't outsource magic. I don't mow the lawns, I outsource it. I don't do my accounts. It's what keeps my accountant in business. Yes, I cook my own food, but at least half of the time it's all outsourced. In fact, when I think about it, a good chunk of my life is just outsourced. Because I don't build my own computers, code my own programs, generate my own electricity. So you could safely say that outsourcing is a good part of my life. But what I don't outsource is magic. It's magical to write my own articles, to create my own books, to draw my own cartoons, to answer my own email. And I understand those that keep yearning for a four hour work week, but I find it incredibly weird and unsettling. I think of someone like Leonardo da Vinci spending only four hours a week painting. I think of Michelangelo goofing up on the statue of David and just putting in the least amount of time. I think of the wine that I drink and how it would taste if the winemaker decided not to put in 50 to 60 hours a week. I remember the movies that moved me, the food that tantalized my taste buds, the books that have elevated my senses, and I think of all the magic the world has seen, felt, and experienced over these centuries, and a four-hour work week makes zero sense to me. You can create money in four hours, but you can't create magic. Money isn't magic. It may seem that way when you're slogging in a job that you have no control over. A life that seems to pull and push you in all directions, and it may seem that way. At that point, money and magic might seem like one and the same thing, and yet it's not. Work is magic. Work well done is something that we all yearn for. And try as you may, you can't outsource the important things in your life. That important stuff needs to be done. So when some internet marketer comes along and tells you that a four-hour work week is magical, they're just equating work with money. That somehow you could work for four hours in a week and make all the money that you wanted and then you would be happy. I can assure you that you would be happy for a while, but then you would seek magic. And magic, that takes so much time and so much more effort. I wake up at 4 a.m. every day, and I've done so for many years, actually now many decades. I don't have to wake up. We've done extremely well over the years. We have a business which attracts really phenomenal customers. Some of them have been with us for over 12 years. Now, considering that we're internet-based, that's like 100 years. Our workshops are always full. Our courses often fill out in an hour, sometimes even 20 minutes. So we've banked enough already. We travel three months in a year. Truly speaking, if we were to stop working now, like right at this very moment, we could go for the next 20 to 30 years living very comfortably, just as we are right now. So why wake up at 4 a.m.? Why put in 99 cartoons in a book when people are happy just to buy it with the text? Why bother to rewrite, to re-engineer the courses by 20 to 30% every time there's an upgrade? It's all extra work, isn't it? More hours in a day, in a month, in a year, 
that seem to go past so quickly? Why do all of this stuff? And the answer lies in magic. You can outsource some stuff and you should, but to create that Mona Lisa, that statue of David, to create that great wine, that's going to take 50 to 60 hours. Yes, every week. Get used to it. That's what creates magic. And that brings us to the end of the podcast. What did we cover in this episode? The first thing that we covered was the six courses behind. It took me a long time to figure it out, but I realized I could never catch up. There was just too much coming at me, and there was too much that I wanted to learn. So both of those problems existed. And instead of fighting this war all the time, what I realized was that I just had to put in the time. So when I go for a walk, on one section of the walk, I will listen to a podcast. On the second section, on the return, I will listen to an audiobook. This is in between talking to Renuka and stuff. And then I make breakfast every day. And when I make breakfast every day, I will put on something like I'm listening now to Dan Brown on Masterclass. So I have a segment. It's not even an hour or minutes. I'm not counting it that way. I'm just looking at a segment. When I go from here to there, I'm going to be doing this. When I go from there to here, I'm going to be doing that and so on. And the segments enable me to just go ahead and do little bits every single day. And so, yes, I'm going to be six courses or 16 courses behind. And it's not a problem because now I'm not stagnating. That was the first thing. The second thing was the concept of no time. If you find yourself saying that you have no time, I can almost guarantee that there is an efficiency problem there. Yes, we have our family lives and everyone is different and we've got parents that we have to look after or kids that we have to look after and responsibilities and other stuff. And life is unpredictable. But the secret to not having time is usually inefficiency. Whatever needs to be done is being done in an inefficient way. It might be 15% inefficient or 75% inefficient, but you can be sure that it's inefficient, which is why you have no time. And I used to take ages to write an article. I used to take ages to do a sales page. All of this stuff made me feel like it was something difficult that needed to be done. When in reality, it was just inefficiency. And even as I'm telling you this, I have to edit this podcast as I'm recording it. And I know there's a shortcut there, but I've been scrolling slowly, like moving that little thing back and forth on my computer. And I know there is a single button that I need to learn about, and I haven't. And it's been so many years, so this is a lesson for me as well. And that takes us to the third part, which is why you can't outsource magic. And the reason for all of this efficiency is to be able to do stuff that's magical, to create stuff that doesn't need to be done. It's just you're creating something that's wonderful. And you need to have the time to do that wonderful stuff. And that's why all the efficiency comes into play. And that's when you can create some fabulous stuff. What's ironical is that it then draws great customers to you who become friends and you have a great life. That to me seems to be success. And that's a little touch of philosophy. And I do hope you liked it. So what's the one thing you can do today? I think it would be efficiency, wouldn't it? I mean, I'm going to go after this. And I'm going to figure out that button so I can report back to you in the next podcast that I figured out how to work that software that I'm using every time I record this podcast. Well, that brings us to the end of this podcast. Let's find out what's happening in Psychotactics land. I'm not sure I mentioned it last time, but we had a workshop on info products and that was supposed to be in Frankfurt, but then we had to move to Munich. 
Anyway, before we went out to the psychotactics list, the Munich workshop was full. And the interesting part about it is that between 60 to 70 percent of the people that came to the Munich workshop were the same ones that came to the Brussels workshop last year. So what's really happening here is the workshops are getting full with clients who have been to other workshops, clients who have been to other courses, done other courses, and they're filling the room or the courses faster than anything else. One of the things that works for us really well is this factor of uniqueness. The ability to describe what's unique about the course, about the product, about a workshop. And that really helps. Now, we have a uniqueness course coming up on the 8th of March. As in, it's a product. You have to buy it online and then download it and read it and listen to it. And that was a course that we did a few years ago. And it shows you how we go about our uniqueness and how you can go about your uniqueness too. So that's the 8th of March. You might want to put that down in your diary. There's the article writing course. This is one of the most wanted courses from Psychotactics. That's on the 5th of April. Now, for both of these courses, you have to be on the waiting list. So go to the pages, go to psychotactics.com and go to products. And what you'll find is that there are goodies there. So get on that waiting list and you will get a whole bunch of goodies. It will enable you to see how much quality and how much clarity there is in the courses and the products. And since you're on the waiting list, you also get an early notification. We have a tier system. 5,000 BC members get first preference, then those on the waiting list, and then everybody else. And usually it's sold out very early. Some people become 5,000 BC members just to get to the courses, just to get to the workshops, etc. The two dates are 5th of April, that's the article writing course, and uniqueness on the 8th of March. And that's me, Sean D'Souza, saying bye for now. Bye-bye. Still listening? One of the problems with having a course internationally, like a physical course at an event, is that you never know what can go wrong. So we started out with Frankfurt. We started looking at venues in Frankfurt, and then someone told us there was going to be a big fair, and therefore the hotels would be booked. So we moved to Munich, but partially because we weren't finding the venues that we wanted in Frankfurt. So we moved to Munich. We booked this place, and then with barely eight weeks to go, maybe 10 weeks to go before the event, the person told us, well, the place is no longer available. I read the email at 6 a.m. and that was it. That was the end of the day. We had to spend the entire day working around how we're going to find this other place, this other venue that's suitable for the workshop. And these things happen. Things just go crazy and you have very little control over it. And sometimes I think it's for the better. I don't know why, but some of these changes have been for the better. And I've only been able to see it in retrospect. So, yes, we've been shunted from Frankfurt to Munich Central and Munich Central to some other place in Munich. But we're going to have a great workshop, after which we head off to Greece, to the islands for about three weeks of holiday and then head back to Singapore and then back to New Zealand. So that's me, Sean D'Souza, saying life is unpredictable. Make the best of it. Bye-bye. Oh, and if you're an introvert and you like being in a safe, comfortable space, there's 5000 BC. Bye-bye.